ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋರಿಂಗ್ ಭಾವಸ್ ಇನ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋರ್ಡ್ ಫೋರ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಇಮೋಟಿವ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ವ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ಆಸ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಐಡಿಯಲ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದಟ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಭಾವರ್ಸ್ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಧಾರ್ಮಿಕ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ we serve ishwara and this is the dasya bhava and the rasa or the feeling that it generates is of deep satisfaction in that service then we have sakya bhava or viewing ishwara as an ideal friend we looked at some ancient tales from the vedic tradition an example but if we were to imagine and evoke ishwara as an ideal friend then surely ishwara would be of assistance to us even without us asking for what we require as in sudama did not enunciate what he needed but krishna being his childhood friend already knew what was required in his friend's life and we often experience that those of us who serve the universe through our um actions are giving our sharing our generous attitude we experience the lordship of the master the universe and the higher power and we serve it and we feel not an enhancement of our ego not the crackling of our vanity and not the tiring of our brow but the experience of fulfillment genuine lightheartedness joy in service and those of us who have um experience ishwara's love as friendship then we have found that invisible helping hand that uh, incomprehensible yet undeniable body as if someone is looking out for us so these two we have looked at then we also looked at uh, ishwara as a child and we um, appreciated the tales of little krishna little gopala being mothered by yashoda and we imagined what that would ex- experience would be like and perhaps it brought home to us that everything fragile beautiful childlike innocent is none other but ishwara sparkling in that entity that experience we also understood so that was vatsalya bhava and we also understood ishwara as a parental figure as something to look up to we then moved which we looked at the story of um of how hiranyakashyap was a tyrant and how his son looked up to vishnu as um as a parental figure and how he then moved on to become the the a great king and a great and a great devotee at the same time we also looked at vatsalya bhava which was if we are to imagine if we are craving and if we are wanting a soulmate a true beloved then what if we imagine ishwara as our beloved ishwara as our lover not a physical lover necessarily but with all the attentiveness of that as meena bai had imagined krishna as her husband or radha had found her beloved in krishna then perhaps that bhava would also work so these pancha bhavas these five bhavas four bhavas we have covered now we are going to look at 
शांतम भाव शांतम मीन्स पीस इन माई क्लासेस इन माई इन माई इन माई प्लेटफॉर्म इन दिस प्लेटफॉर्म वेदिक वे वेर आई एम टीचिंग आई हैड स्पेंड अ होल ईयर और ऑलमोस्ट अ ईयर एक्सप्लोरिंग शांतम भव एंड भव एंड भाव आर डिफरेंट शांतम भव मीन्स पीसफुल बी and shantam bhava with a longer a bhava means the 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 emotive state of peacefulness and today we are going to look at shantam bhava i want to point out to you that there is a journey here through these bhavas when we are interfacing with the divine allness as a master or as a friend something outside us and we are either serving it or appealing to its friendship or kind of depending upon it this is more in the paradigm of duality separateness independent existence when we go into a relationship a child really child and parent relationship where uh, where the divine reality is a child and we are the parent till the adult or we are child and the uh, divine reality is a parent then this is more like qualified non duality we are one as in we have an inherent connection and yet we are different just like we have with our parents or with our children we i mean from all aspects we are one we share one blood one gene pool one dna often one home in some significant part of our life uh, one memory one aspiration and yet we are different so this is qualified non duality now this final bhava that we are going to explore today dear students this is um this is the relationship of non duality that there will be really no separation between your hood me hood and ishwara hood so let us explore this and for this we are going to now actually come pretty close to the teachings of gnana yoga or the wisdom path the path of non duality which is what um is the fundamental approach in my lineage and this is where duality based bhakti gives way to non duality so for this let me let me lead you to some contemplations we have been talking about bhakti as divine love as love and we have been thinking about offering love to ishwara in the form of the culturalized versions culturalized versions of ishwara that we are aware of we were born in a certain family certain culture certain nation and we were told god looks like this god wears these clothes god is such and such or we were later led to an understanding of godly archetypes murtis or um, symbols or deities such as i have been sharing with you in certain sessions such as ganesha ganesha is not a person but a power that is understood as ganesha or saraswati or durga these are all ishwara powers these are symbols of ishwara but either way there is nama or name and there is form rupa so there is nama and rupa and the reason our bhakti waxes and wanes or reason our bhakti brackets love waxes and wanes for nama rupa or name and form version of god goddess ishwara divine allness is because this type of love is still established as an experience in our mind 
So a lot of the times our understanding of love is a mental understanding of love. And the moment we bring the concept of my, my or mine because of which I love, right away it is not love necessarily, but it's a kind of an attachment. And attachment always comes with its opposite, which is aversion. That is why when we, I love my guru, and the students who proclaim a lot of love may become candidates for hate down the road. I hate my guru. I love my partner can turn into I hate my partner. Anything that happens, any especially love that we equate with the mind and as a result, the bhakti that emerges from that mind, the love slash bhakti that emerges from that mind will be volatile. And even if it doesn't translate into hate, because the mind is distractible, because the mind can get lost in the world, because the mind tends to follow its senses. For large periods of the day, week, decades can pass. And the love that one experienced uh, in terms of bhakti can be quite uh, passive or subsided. And other emotional states may come up. But I want to introduce you to what is bhakti or what is love then. And I've talked about it earlier, but I'll bring it up again. See, bhakti or love actually has, is not really a phenomena of the mind. All love talk that the mind talks about is just talk, blah, 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 until it changes. It is not a mental phenomena at all. Mind cannot reach love. Why? Because love is the nature of your Atma, of the source. So mind cannot understand this source, cannot, cannot draw from it and it creates all versions of love and writes books on love and poetry of love and songs of love and yet there is hatred everywhere. Only when it is peaceful and directed, it can resolve into that pool of, pool of love. So love is your deepest nature from beyond the mind. That is love. It is the great unknown where the mind, where love dwells. And so to know this unknown, all that is known has to be let go. So all mental understandings of love has to be let go. And this love, this source, this atmic source, which is just Love, you cannot even call it a quality of that source because even quality means something separate. What is that inner presence? What is that inner Atma? It is love. So the only way to approach it, because the mind doesn't know it, mind is way technical, superficial vibration to this truth of love. So how can we even approach this love, this source of bhakti, this, this flowing, ever-flowing eternal river of love within our being. 
through negation through neti 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 means negation conscious negation so we say that love is not lust love is not possession love is not necessarily indian looking gods love is not uh, western gods love is not <laughs> love is not this love is not that it is not the emotionalism of the mind it is not the euphoria of the mind it is not the sentimentalic constructs of the mind of love love is not just weeping like a crazy person for god that is not love love is not giggling with presence of god no that is not also love because oh why because all these are mere sensations they come and go in the name of love So when we let go of everything and we come into this emptiness, this quietitude, and then we are merely aware of the pure aware being within. And I invite you to be aware of that pure aware being. Then Love is its own aroma, just like a rose. It has its own aroma. The love doesn't need to turn into a tantalizing perfume in a pretty bottle to have an aroma. When you become aware of the rose, you become aware of its aroma. In the same way, when you are in the state of shantam, this peacefulness of the mind, when the mind's conceptions, ideas, versions of God, godliness, this, that, bhakti, analysis, this bhava, that, everything calms down. You just become aware of awareness itself. And love is its, love is its truth. And what does love do? Love makes you okay. Love makes you feel whole. And if people come near you and participate in, with you in your life, they become a little more whole. Why? Because you don't love someone. Because that is your mind saying, I possess that person. I have feelings for that person. I have plans for that person. I would like to own that person on social media. No as me and mine. But instead, love is a spirit, invisible connection. Somebody could be far away and your love can reach them. So it is your swarupa. Swa means self, rupa means it's your own true self that is love. And you cannot separate the thread from the cloth. If you unravel the thread, there is no cloth and there is no cloth without the thread. In the same way, love is the nature of your Atma. And what is that Atma? It's pure awareness. What is that awareness? Awareness is not this and that. And over here, even the various culturalized descriptions of gods and goddesses is merely noise at that level. At Shantam Bhava, one does neti neti and just goes in. Where words no longer reach, where ideas no longer belong. Awareness of the pure conscious being and to be conscious of it. This is the pure being that is pure love. And when you are here, you are in a state of love. Everything feels better. Your cells are happy. Even your mind feels so relaxed whole universe becomes better.
No. This is love. So first of all, we have in our discussion of we are not we are not discarding or discrediting all the bhavas we have studied. They are also very valid forms of bhakti, but we are now understanding the rationale of non-duality where we go beyond dasya bhava and expressing our love there too. Sakya bhava, vatsalya bhava, parental or child love, madhurya bhava, romantic love, shantam bhava. Now form name disappear. Now all of these were simply steps to lead us here where if we are under the tree of non-dual wisdom where a teacher sits to impart to you not wisdom freshly minted in their mind which is nothing but noise but the wisdom of the Upanishads to say that all where all words and ideas and categories quieten down. When there is pure silence, then love reveals itself in the form of Atma Swarupa. Atma is revealing itself as pure awarefulness, which is love. So this is the this is the resolution of ritualism, puja, worship, ceremony, chanting, mala, yoga, asana, everything comes down. And there is sheer awareness and it's enough.